Well, sir, it's late afternoon as our scene opens now. And here in the living room of the small house, halfway up in the next block, we find Mr. and Mrs. Victor Gook. The former arrived home from the office only a few moments ago and is busy looking over his mail. And he's saying... Did you read this letter from Lodge headquarters? Yes. Quite a proposition they advanced. Them Lodge fellas up there in Chicago must lay awake nights figuring up stuff to grab a person's money. Rather a harsh statement, Sadie. No, but I bet they do. I find this interesting. Now listen, we've got robes and swords and diplomas and tassel boots. And... <laughs> keep your shirt on, Dr. Williams. Fifty more dollars they'd love to have you fork over. And keep your shirt on, Uncle Harry. I don't plan to take them up on their proposition. Good thing. You see you're done from Kleeberger's? I gave it a cursory glance. They suggest I remit two dollars? Yes. Kleeberger's cry and whine over that two bucks like it was a gunny sack full of rubies. Why don't you pay him? And break the slender silken cord that binds me to Kleeberger's? Never, Sadie. That two dollars represents a sacred bind. I'd be the worst kind hey, of a scoundrel if I violated a golden relationship. Yes. Yeah. Is... Well, drop by and pay him tomorrow. Liable to give you a bad name around town letting bills drag on and on. I just experienced the most dramatic moment of my life. Hello, no, Watson. Come here and give me a hug and a kiss. Hi, Gov. Never realized you were home. That's because you're not very bright. <laughs> okay. Mom, I just got done experiencing the most dramatic moment of my life. Hmm. I've knocked around this old world a good many years. I've seen civilization come and I've seen civilization go. But this afternoon was the high point in my career. Hmm. Walter's kneecaps on the war path again. Letter from Bess? Postal card. Shall I read it to you? Okay. Don't you want to hear what happened, Mom? When? I come home here all excited and make the startling announcement I just experienced the most dramatic moment of my career. Nobody even inquires about it. What happened? Smelly Clark had a heavy hammer to fall on top of his head from a height of over ten feet. Golly. By George, you should have been there. Must have hurt. Must have been excruciating. By George, in my entire career, Say, I never... did you... Uh, excuse me, Pete. Did you read this letter carefully? <laughs> I never made a deep study of it. They want you to have your picture taken and then hand them over fifty dollars. I perceive you didn't read it carefully. They don't talk about having my picture taken. They talk about having my picture painted. Yes, for $50. Well, we're forgetting the $50 one moment. The idea strikes me is being considerable of merit. Now, listen, Vic, you're simply well, not, not going to... I'm not going to take them up on it, kiddo. Well, I should say you're not. No harm in discussing a thing. Lodge headquarters... Lodge the... headquarters. I wish Lodge headquarters was on the other side of the Pacific Ocean. Your father wants to have his picture painted. I do not. Well, that's fine. Now throw your letter in the trash bucket before you start flirting around with their darn scheme. <laughs> You're a tough customer, Senator Flitch. I'll say. You have to go after groceries, Willie. Don't have the slightest interest in Smelly Clark, huh? You already told about Smelly. He had a hammer hit him on the head. Does that strike you as being the most dramatic moment of my career? Huh? I come home here and say I just experienced the most dramatic moment of my career. Smelly Clark getting hit on the head with a hammer wouldn't be the most dramatic moment of my career, would it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm all confused about what you're trying to say. It was the circumstances around Smelly Clark getting hit on the head with a hammer that produced the most dramatic moment of my career. Well, for goodness sakes, what was the most dramatic moment of your career? Will you listen? Sure. Smelly and myself were over in the 600 block on West Monroe Street. A telephone man from the telephone company was up a telephone pole fixing telephone wires. Smelly and I were standing on the ground watching him. Well, sir, along come Eunice Raypole. Smelly likes Eunice. He'd enjoy having her for his girl. Well, sir, by George, she come along the sidewalk and stopped to chat. We chatted back and forth about various topics. The telephone man from the telephone company was still up the telephone pole fixing telephone wires. All of a sudden... Say, there's stuff on the other side. Uh, beg pardon, George. Yeah, beg pardon. Stuff on the other side of where? This letter from Lodge headquarters. They send a man down. Who do? Lodge headquarters. Send a man down where? Wherever you live. Send him down from Chicago and he paints your picture. Listen, uh, Albert M. Glutch, the famous artist, is available to travel to your home. As long as you reside within the boundaries of the United States, Mr. Glutch will seek you out. I bet he will. Seek you out and grab your $50 like a pistol shot. I see you will not permit me to talk this over. 
I see where I... What is there to talk over? You said you didn't want your picture painted. I don't. All right, then. I wager you don't even grasp the idea of this. Wager away. Lots of lodge members like to have a portrait of their exalted Big Dipper hung in the lodge hall. Headquarters has provided a way to make this possible. They send an artist down from Chicago. He paints your picture. The notion impresses me as being a very fine one. Who slaps out the $50? Whoever gets their portrait painted. But you don't want your portrait painted. I can see where considerable might be said in favor of Do you or don't you? Let me finish my sentence. I say I can see where considerable might be said in favor of having... Just like I expected. You danced around that darn letter and flirted with it to where you've got yourself all talked into forking over $50 for some crazy... I give up. Absolutely impossible for a man to talk over a matter impersonally. Lodge trash around here now till who laid the chunk. Okay. I say no more. Groceries, Willie. If I ever have another dramatic experience, I'll keep it to myself. What happened when Smelly got hit with the hammer? You never finished. I wasn't given the opportunity to finish. It was your father interrupted you. Jumped down his collar. An individual experiences the most dramatic moment of their entire career and his own blood relations... Well, go ahead. You three kids were standing underneath the telephone pole. Did the telephone fellow drop his hammer? Yes. One of them big, heavy kind? Yes. <laughs> Golly. Smelly likes Eunice Raypole. He'd enjoy having her for his girl. Always attempting to make a good impression on her. Get the angle? Uh-huh. Well, we were standing there talking. Forgot all about the telephone fella from the telephone company up the telephone pole fixing telephone wires. All of a sudden, slam. Something hit Smelly on top of the head like a ton of bricks. I looked down on the ground and saw it was this big heavy hammer. By George, it must have weighed six pounds. And it had fallen a distance of at least ten feet. Might have broken the child's skull. I bet it come within nine sixteenths of an inch of it. Ooh. Mom, as yet I haven't divulged the most dramatic moment of my career. Well, divulge it. When Smelly Clark got hit on the head with that hammer, he didn't flicker an eyelash. Ah. Uh, he jumped a little tiny bit, and he may have bit his lips slightly, but his face never changed expression, and he never shed a tear. Well, the what? It was for Eunice's benefit. Oh. Smelly refused to show any signs of weakness with Eunice looking on. Oh. He glanced up at the telephone guy and says, Be more careful next time, chum. And there wasn't a quiver in his voice. Smelly must have a good thick skull. Not any thicker than anybody else's. Mm-hmm. Mom, I still haven't divulged the most dramatic moment of my career. <laughs> well, divulge it. Smelly picked up the telephone guy's hammer and handed it back to him. The telephone guy was sorry and apologized to beat the band for being careless and then started working again. Smelly and Eunice and myself continued to chat. Chatted about five more minutes. Then Eunice said goodbye and went away. She walked on up Monroe Street and turned off at Mason. As soon as she was out of sight, the very second she was out of sight, I experienced the most dramatic moment of my entire career. What happened? Smelly threw himself down on the ground and cried like a little baby. Oh, really? Like a little baby. Oh. He was in terrible agony. Had been in terrible agony all the time since he got hit on the head. But he wouldn't show it in front of Eunice. Hmm. But the second she was out of sight, he let go. He threw himself on the ground and cried like a little baby. Hmm. Like a little baby. Says here, uh, H.X. Slime, the exalted Big Dipper of the naughty Narcissus chapter, had his portrait painted. You still reading that trash? Yes. I am still reading this trash. I knew you'd flirt around till you talked yourself into sloshing out fifty dollars to them darn Chicago fellas. Okay. I knew you... Groceries rush. The most dramatic moment of my entire career. Mm-hmm. Threw himself on the ground hmm. and cried like a little baby. Which concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block.